Hello, listeners. This is Kat. Welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Deku Dio. This will be Part 12, Chapter 13, entitled Great Expectations. Sagamata Senpai. What did you just say? Momo turned around, having genuinely missed what her green haired comrade had just asked in the chaos. It's nothing, Izuku sighed. Part of him desperately wanted to go confront his former senpai to get some answers. Another part of him never wanted to speak to him again. Izuku had followed the man's hero career closely, as he did with all the top pros. But when he was younger, he couldn't help the feelings of sadness and slight self-loathing, which welled up whenever he saw a news article featuring his friend. Former friend. Had he not been good enough for the hero, had Sakamata senpai decided that Izuku was a useless, quirkless freak after all, and had been too nice to say anything. As Izuku aged, and his sense of self-worth healed, that self-loathing turned to anger. He had been a child. It was not his fault. And the fact that Sakamata had abandoned a small child who idolized him and who he knew had abandonment issues was all kinds of fucked up. And yet deep, deep down, a small part of Izuku hoped that there was some meaning behind it all. That Sakamata had some deeper reason which would justify the whole fiasco. Izuku knew that people were complicated. The Sakamata he knew was complicated, and he was a good hero. He wouldn't just... Right? Anyways, Izuku began, I'm going to take these supplies back. We can't afford to get distracted now. The villain attack probably only means we're going to get even more patience. Right, I'm recalling one of the teams to protect the first aid station. Their medic will help you with treating patients. Keep me updated. Will do, and same to you. Izuku grabbed the crate of bandages and disinfectant and raced back to the medical tent. Deku, what's happening? Awada exclaimed, the moment that Izuku ducked into the tent. The terrorists were still here. Gang Orca and his sidekicks are playing the villains. Wait, seriously? He's my favorite hero! Izuku flinched at that. Not the time. We should expect an influx of patients. Kreidi is recalling a team to protect the medical tent, meaning we'll get another pair of hands on deck soon. What's our status? We've managed to treat around half of our yellow tags. Scimitar gave pain meds to the red tags. Well, in theory, he didn't actually since they're acting and all, but you get the point. Impressive. I was only gone for maybe seven minutes. Tell me where you need me. Follow me. Patient is conscious, but with altered mental status. We suspect some form of head trauma. They're clearly in pain, and they keep groaning and screaming. Right. Izuku followed Awada to the patient in question, a young man around Izuku's age with fluffy tufts of brown hair. As soon as Izuku kneeled next to the patient, Awada turned to go treat her own. Hi, my name is Deku, and I'm going to take care of you. Can you tell me your name? The patient simply moaned and rocked back and forth, crying. That's okay. Do you see my finger? I want you to follow it with your eyes. The patient's eyes were slightly unfocused, but did follow the finger. Great, thank you. However, before Izuku could move on to the next test, the patient slapped him hard in the chest. Izuku winced in pain, but otherwise didn't outwardly react. Izuku was fairly certain he understood the situation now, but he needed to be sure. I'm going to need to look at your eyes. This may be bright. Izuku pulled his pen light from his pocket and flashed it into the patient's eyes. The patient reared back, away from the light, but after a moment let Izuku look at his eyes. Pupils dilating normally, no sign of exterior wounds to the head, Izuku mumbled. Can I feel your head? The patient groaned, but shifted closer to Izuku. No tenderness or inflammation. All right, thank you. I noticed you're not wearing a medical bracelet. Do you have one that fell off? The patient started hitting themselves in the knee. Whoa, easy there. No bracelet, then. Do you have a card? The patient froze and pulled a medical ID card from their back pocket. As suspected, patient name, Fuji Ken. Diagnosis, autism nonverbal. Okay, thank you. From what I see, everything is going to be okay. You're going to need to see a doctor at the hospital, but I don't immediately see anything life-threatening. Do you know JSL? Izuku signed as he spoke. The patient's eyes snapped to Izuku's hands. I didn't think you'd notice. The patient signed. The others didn't. Good job. Unfortunately, I'm not surprised. I know a good amount of people with intellectual and or developmental disabilities, and you were showing all the classic signs of a meltdown, Izuka replied, continuing to sign as he did. Good job asking for my ID. I'd like it back, though. That's my real ID. Oh, sorry. Here you go, Fuji-san. Izuka hurriedly returned the ID card. Don't worry. Now I assume you have other patients. Yes, here's a green tag. Please hold on to it. Could you go over there with the people with the green tags to wait? Sure. Hey, Deku, 
Isuka turned around to face Yakahashi. The reinforcements are here. That girl working on the patient over there with the Naginata strapped to her back is our new medic. Hero named the Vanguard Hero, Lancer. Her quirk gives her a supernatural aptitude towards pole arms. Nice, Izuku whistled, but before he could say anything else, his calm crackled to life. Deku, this is Kreidi. Do you copy? Over. This is Deku. I hear you loud and clear. Over. We need you on the field. Todoroki and a kid from Shiketsu are fighting each other instead of Gang Orca, and you're the only person who has a chance of getting through to Todoroki. Over. Shit. I'm on my way. Over and out. Izuku turned back towards Yagahashi. I'm needed on the field. Can you guys handle this? Sure thing. We should be fine now that we have some extra hands. Great. And without another word, Izuku charged one for all into his legs and sprinted off towards the battlefield. You think we're the same? Don't be ridiculous. You're a fool. I'm nothing like him, Todoroki growled. You and your father are the only heroes I can't accept. You don't deserve the title. Do you understand? Now move! Narashi launched an attack at Gang Orca at the same time as Todoroki, diverting Todoroki's flames towards Shindo, who was rescuing a citizen off to the side. Shindo had no time to react, but just before he was about to be incinerated, Izuku swooped in and pulled him out of the way. Damn it! Are you insane? What the hell do you think you're doing? Izuku shouted at the two, before crashing with Shindo a ways away. Todoroki's eyes widened. Sakamata was enraged. The two brats in front of him were really arguing with each other instead of going after the villain right in front of them. It was a disgrace to the name of heroics. The kid with the wind quirk was the instigator, but Endeavor's son still carried a portion of the blame for rising to the bait, and not even attempting to resolve the argument or communicate. And then the flames were diverted, straight towards one of their own allies. Sakamata took in a deep breath, preparing to launch a sound wave to divert the course of the fire, but before he could, a green blur of lightning swooped in and pulled the kid out of the way. Damn it! Are you insane? What the hell do you think you're doing? Izuku shouted at the two before crashing with Shindo a ways away. Sakamata froze. That voice, the green hair, he would know it anywhere. Yet it couldn't be. After all, this hero student had a quirk, and Izuku was quirkless. But he couldn't help but wish. Never mind. Sakamata shook himself out of his thoughts. The kid was safe, which was the important thing, and he had a job to do. No more games, Sakamata growled, releasing the sound wave he had prepared. First, I'll stop the wind. The wave hit the kid with a wind quirk, blasting him away. Got him. That's our boss, a total powerhouse, one of his sidekicks crowed. Now it's time to trap these do-gooders in cement, cheered another. Okay, so Sakamata would need to work with the sidekicks on their acting. They were somehow even cringier than actual villains, which, in its own way, was an impressive feat. Sakamata then turned to Endeavor's kid, grabbing him by the neck. You reap what you sow, Sakamata threatened, tightening his grip into a choke while being careful not to permanently injure the kid. Hey, while the boss is at it, let's go destroy the evacuation shelter. He'll love that, a sidekick proposed. Hell yeah. They didn't get very far. The kid who was the Azuku lookalike had rescue blasted the ground, sending all of the sidekicks flying. Sakamata decided to ignore it. His sidekicks could handle themselves. Now then, he dropped Todoroki. I'll take down the wind user and continue with the attack. Before he could approach the kid with the wind quirk, however... The two hero-links seemed to get their act together, launching a joint fire and wind attack at him. It didn't make up for how they were behaving earlier, but it wasn't a bad start, unfortunately for them. Sakamata wasn't going to let them win that easily. Unleashing another sound wave, he dispersed the tornado of flames which had surrounded him and moved to retreat. Not so fast, the green kid appeared from out of nowhere in a crackle of lightning. Sakamata, senpai. Sakamata's jaw dropped. Izuku... Sakamata breathed in wonder. Izuku frowned, anger boiling. Why are you so surprised? Oh, right. You've only been ghosting me for the past seven years. He snarked. Not that it matters right now. I'm here to stop you, villain. I won't let you hurt anybody else. You... you have a quirk, Sakamata exclaimed. No shit. Now are you going to fight back? Or can I take this little chat as a sign of your unconditional surrender? That seemed to somewhat snap Sakamata out of it. We'll be talking about this after. He growled as he launched a punch at Izuku. Oh, so now you want to talk. Izuku blocked the punch and returned it with a powered-up kick. Well, fuck off. You had seven years of chances. I don't know you jack shit. Sakamata winced, whether it was in pain from the kick or the verbal barb, Izuku wasn't sure. You're right. You don't owe me anything. But I do owe you an explanation if you're willing to hear it. Whatever. 
Izuku frowned, torn and angry, shaking off his turmoiled thoughts as he could launch another attack at his mentor. Former mentor. Yeesh. Your kicks pack some punch, squirt. Don't call me that, Izuku grimaced, continuing to exchange blows. Now are you going to take this seriously? You're barely fighting back. Very well. Sakamoto took a deep breath and released another sound wave. Izuku punched the ground hard, creating a large gust which repelled the sound. Nice try, villain. Izuku flicked a series of air bullets at the hero which were dodged. The two clashed together in an exchange of kicks and punches. Izuku tried his new special move, fingers crackling with one for all. He prodded at Sakamata's pressure points. Ouch, that stings. Sakamata hissed, but he retained full motion of his arm. That should have immobilized your arms. Frickin' whale blubber, Izuku complained. Guess I'll have to up the power. Yeah, I'm going to say no to that idea. Sakamata pushed Izuku away with another sound wave. That's what you think. Izuku couldn't help but fall into an ingrained pattern of banter with Sakamata. I'll have you know that I'm very persistent. I'm well aware, Sakamata said dryly. You swindled me into buying Katsudan enough times. You know I was perpetually broke because of you. What can I say? I have a cute face. It was cuter before you were strong enough to kick over a building. Now you're more scary than cute. Why, thank you. That wasn't a compliment. Yes, it was, Izuku smirked. Okay, maybe it was. A little. But it mostly wasn't a compliment. Whatever you say, Mr. Villain, sir. Um, are you two going to fight, or just have the super awkward front of me chat? Shoto suddenly interrupted. Both Izuku and Sakamata froze. Shoto-kun, you're up! Izuku's voice was a decidedly higher pitch than usual. Yes. R right then. Um, you up to fighting this villain with me? Todoroki and I will take him together. Now Rashi suddenly dropped to the ground next to Todoroki. It's our fault you had to step in anyways. Shotokun? It's fine, Deku. We've got this. Go help Shindo bring the last stragglers to the medical tent. Right. With one last, conflicted look at Sakamata, Izuku blasted off towards Shindo. Shindo-kun, what can I help with? We have two more civilians trapped under the rubble here. I've managed to get one out, but the others are in deep, and I don't dare use my quirk for fear of injuring them further. Right. Izuku nodded firmly. Can you guard us while I remove the rubble? No problem. Izuka steeled himself and used one for all to lift a large piece of rubble off the leg of a prone woman. Miss, my name is Deku. I'm here to rescue you. What's your name? Ami. Thanks, Ami-san. Do you think you can walk? The woman shook her head. She likely had a broken leg. All right, that's okay. Do you hurt anywhere other than your leg? My shoulder. And ribs a little, but not bad. Okay. I'm going to get the last person out of the rubble and take you both to the medical tent. Can you wait here for a moment for me? Okay, Ami agreed quietly. Sir, this is Deku. I'm here to rescue you. Can you hear me? Izuku asked an older man pinned under a pile of rubble. The man just groaned. Okay, I'm going to get you out of there. Hold on. Izuku began removing the rubble, revealing a serious laceration across the man's stomach, gushing blood. Shit. Luckily, the patient didn't seem to be in shock. Okay, sir. I'm going to need to slow the bleeding before I can move you. Can you use your arms? Yeah. Okay. Izuku peeled the victim's shirt over his stomach and pulled the last gauze pad from his pocket. I need you to hold this as hard as you can against your stomach. The man did as requested, while Izuku dug around in his pockets for bandages. Damn it, I'm out of bandages. I'll have to improvise. Izuku activated 1% of his quirk and tore the sleeves off his hero costume, which he further ripped into long strips which he used to secure the dressing around the wound. Ready? Shindo asked. Yeah. Can the civilian you rescued walk? Yes. All right. I'm going to rush this man to the clinic. Can you carry Ami? I'll be back to help as soon as I drop him off. Sure. Izuku gave Shindo a tired grin before picking up his patient bridal style and blasting off towards the medical tent. I've got a priority one yellow tag, Izuku shouted as he burst into the tent. Major abdominal bleed. On it. Yagahashi rushed over with a stretcher. I can't stay. There are two more civilians to transport. Don't worry, I've got this. Great, thanks. Izuku spun around and made a beeline for Shindo, Ami, and the third civilian. That was fast. Shindo raised an eyebrow in surprise. It's a helpful application of my quirk. I hate to admit this, but you're much faster than me and time is of the essence here. Do you think you can carry them both? No problem. Izuku agreed easily. What's your name? 
he asked the third civilian, a teenage boy. Amuro Ray. All right, Amuro-san. Can you climb on my back piggyback style? Yeah, all right. Once Amuro was secure, Izuku accepted Ami from Shindo's arms. I'm going to go look for others. Sounds good. I'll probably stay at the medical tent. They're overrun. No worries. See you on the flip side. Yeah, see you. You guys ready? Yup. No, but I don't think I'll ever be, Ami stuttered. Scared of heights. Scared of falling. Don't worry. I promise I won't let anything happen to you. Just close your eyes and hold onto my neck really tight, okay? Y yeah. All right, here we go. And Izuka took off once more. He had barely reached the medical tent when the overhead speakers crackled to life. A loud sound, like a foghorn blaring. Oh yeah, so at this time, Mara's drawling voice began. All the HUC members who were deployed had been rescued from the disaster zone. It may seem anticlimactic, but with this, the provisional licensing exam has officially been completed. After we tally the scores, we'll announce the results here in the arena. Anyone injured should go to the infirmary. The rest of you... Free to change clothes and wait wherever you'd like. I guess you two were the last ones, huh? Izuka smiled at the pair he was holding brightly. You can put us down. We're not actually injured, you know. Huh? Oh, right. Izuka hastily said, Ami down and let Amuro climb off his back. Sorry. No worries. You did good, kid. Ami slapped Izuka on the back. Izuka's eyes widened at her complete 180 in personality. Wow, you're a really talented actor. Thanks. You're a talented hero. Izuku blushed cherry red. Th thanks Anyway, it was nice to meet you. I'm going to change into some regular clothes. So, how do you think you did? Okay, I think. Like, it wasn't perfect by any stretch, but it wasn't awful either. Are you kidding? I did amazing. You sucked. The HUC lady was yelling at you and everything. Shut up. It's not like you did any better. Izuku let the den of the locker room chatter wash over him as he quickly changed into a pair of sweats. Hey, Izuku. Izuka spun around to face Saro. Aizawa wants to see all of 1A in the waiting area. Right, thanks. I'll be right there. See ya. Izuka finished pulling his oversized gray sweatshirt over his head and made his way to meet his classmates. Mito kun Mina sighed as he approached. Why does your sweatshirt say pants? Isn't it hilarious? Um, no. I can't even express the magnitude of the crime against fashion that I am seeing before me. It's not that bad, Izuku pouted. It really is, Hagakuri agreed. The only person I know who has worse fashion sense than you is Todoroki, Momo added on. Hey, what is this? Pick on Izuku Day. I think Todoroki-kun's clothes are nice, Mina frowned, ignoring Izuku's protests. His sister had to intervene on their father's bequest and now picks out all of his clothing for him. He had a tendency to wear Hawaiian t-shirts and striped disco pants. Together. What's wrong with that? Izuku asked, a gobsmacked faces. All right, everyone for taking control of Izuku's wardrobe. Wait, what? Aye, aye. Then it's settled. No, it isn't. Oi, problem class. Gather round. Aizawa interrupted the conversation. Sensei, did you watch us in the exam? Wasn't I super manly? Did I look très chic? Pipe down. Yes, I was watching the exam, and I have feedback for all of you. A hush fell over the class, and Izuka squirmed in anticipation. What would Aizawa Sensei say? Did he think there was anything weird about Izuka's work in the medical tent? All right. Firstly, congratulations for completing your licensing exam. You usually wouldn't take it for another two years, so the fact that this entire class managed to pass the first round is something you should be proud of, regardless of the outcome. Aizawa Sensei is being so nice to us, Kaminari sniffled. Hold your horses. That being said, if you did in fact pass the test, it means that you will be working as a hero with real civilians in real emergencies. None of you are actually ready for this. There's a reason we don't usually let our first years take the exam. This year's special circumstances for 1A aside. As a result, your training will be more intense from here on out, and you will be held to a higher standard than a first-year student usually would be. Man, why do I feel like this is going to hurt? Saro complained. I thought we simply flashed him an evil-looking smirk. In light of this, we are currently going to review your performances during the exam. Name someone you think did well. Momo-chan was amazing, Hagakure gushed. She successfully led the entire rescue operation, including all the third years, in the second round. 
Momo blushed and covered her face with her hands. I agree. Aizawa gave Momo a rare smile. Yayorozu did an admirable job taking charge. It's not an easy thing being the one responsible for making the tough decisions. It's even harder when people you are leading are complete strangers. You did very well. What are some things that Yayorozu could improve upon? Yes, Todorogi-kun. Taking initiative. Momo was wonderful as mission command, but she wasn't actually the leader during the second phase. That was Izuku. I wouldn't say that, Izuku protested. I spent almost the whole exam in the medical tent. Okay, but before that, you were the one to organize everything. He's right, problem child. We'll get to that in a second. Back to Yayorozu. I agree that taking the initiative is something to work on. You tend to be overcautious, though that in of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Right, sensei. That being said, don't feel like you have to be the leader in every situation. I only suggest this because of your natural leadership abilities. However, I do strongly recommend that you focus more on your hand-to-hand -hand combat training. You've become over-reliant on your quirk. Yes, sir. Now, back to Midoriya. Frankly, I'll admit I wasn't able to see most of your performance as you were inside the medical tent. Izuku breathed a quiet sigh of relief. As Todoroki mentioned, you did an excellent job of taking control of the situation prior to the second round. I frankly have no critiques of your decision-making, though you may have been better placed in the field given the nature of your quirk. Well done. Thank you, Sensei. Izuku flushed at the praise. Now onto your fight with Gang Orca. You did well, but you kept getting distracted. I'm not sure what you were talking about, but you shouldn't allow yourself to lose focus like that. You were lucky this was an exercise. In real combat, your lack of focus could have gotten you or the people around you killed. Sorry, Sensei. Don't be sorry. Learn from this, and do better moving forward. Which brings me to Todoroki. I have to be honest, I'm deeply disappointed in you. There's no excuse for what happened when you were supposed to be fighting Gang Orca. I know. It won't happen again. No, it won't. I know the results aren't out yet, but I can guarantee you that stunt cost you any chance of passing that you may have had. I figured. Todoroki sighed. I will accept the consequences of my actions. Good. Guess you're not so high and mighty anymore, huh, half and half? You're not one to talk, Bakugo. The way you spoke to and treated civilians you were rescuing was abhorrent. I doubt you'll be getting your license today, either. Huh? What did you say? Izuka smiled to himself with a familiar interaction, settling in to wait for his scores. I can't believe all of us passed, Hagakure cheered. Well, almost all of us. Jiro, I, Todoroki, and Bakugo neither of whom were holding shiny new licenses. Don't worry about me, Todoroki reassured. I deserved it. I'm sure Shotokun and Kachan will catch up to us in no time. What did you say, nerd? Are you looking down on me? Izuka rolled his eyes fondly. Um, Midoriya-san. Izuka turned to face a tall man with an aquatic mutation quirk. Maybe some kind of eel. He was probably one of Sakamata's sidekicks. Yes? I think you dropped this. It has your name on it. The man passed Izuku an envelope, which he had never seen before in his life. Right. Uh, thanks. Izuku gave a short bow. Don't worry about it, kid. And congrats on the license. The man gave a lazy wave before disappearing into the crowd. What was that about? Uraka wondered. Oh, this was a good luck note from my mom. I must have dropped it somewhere. Izuku lied. If he had to guess, it was most likely a letter from Sakamada. Aw, that's so sweet of her. Anyway, did you hear about that recent villain fight? Later that night, alone in a storm with only a single lit desk lamp for company, Izuka pulled out the envelope. Carefully ripping it open, he unfolded the letter inside. Hey, Squirt. I know you're probably furious with me, and you have every right to be, but I wanted to let you know how proud I am of you. You did good today, kiddo, and you're going to be a great hero. I always thought so, even before you manifested a quirk. Which, what? Can we talk about that for a moment? I'm not asking you to forgive me, but you deserve an explanation for why I left. If you want it, that is. I'm not sorry I left, but I am sorry that it meant I couldn't be a part of your life. I doubt you take me at my word, but I mean it when I say that it broke my heart to leave you. Know that I never stopped loving you, my little Kohai, my baby brother in all but blood, even though I wasn't able to be there for you. I also have several years of ungifted birthday presents sitting in my closet if you want them. If you're interested in hearing what I have to say... My private phone number is on the back of this letter. You are also welcome to burn this letter. Call me to scream at me, or otherwise ignore my invitation. You have complete control here. Last time I made the choice for you. 
this time it's your turn to get to choose. Your senpai. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 13 of Deku Dio. Chapter 14 will be up next. Hope you all are still enjoying, and as always, thank you so much for listening.